back inside the Mountain West Network studio for day two of Mountain West Men's Basketball Media Days. He's Jesse Kurtz, I'm Bridget Howard, and we're ready to get this day started. So let's head on out to Logan, Utah, and bring in the head coach of the Utah State Aggies, Ryan Odom. Coach, it's great to see you. You've got your first season down in Utah. Uh, what gets you excited about your second season with the Aggies? Yeah, we're really excited about uh, being here at, at Utah State for the second season. Uh, we feel like we've got a really good team coming back, a uh, good core group of leaders, you know, returning uh, specifically on the perimeter. And uh, we've had a great summer and, and fall to start start the year here. And, you know, we're excited to get going, as I'm sure all our Mountain West programs are. Coach Odom, to please make sure to raise your hand to enter the queue, and we'll have some time for follow-ups as well. Coach, you tasked your team with three goals for this summer, to be more mentally and physically tough, be more connected, and to establish your culture. How do you feel you did in addressing those things this offseason? Yeah, I think time will tell with that, obviously, as we get going with the season, but you know, we feel good about where we're at right now. Uh, you know, In terms of, of being mentally tougher, we lost some close games last year, and uh, – you know, in Mountain West play, I mean, you look no further than, you know, the quarterfinal games and how close each of those games were, uh, you know, going into the semifinals the next day. Uh, I think each of them were decided by two points. And uh, we were in quite a few of those games, both in the non-conference and also in Mountain West play. And so our guys are motivated, uh, you know, because of some of those tough losses that that we experienced last year. And you know, we felt it was really important for us uh, to really, you know, invest a little bit more, work a little bit harder, put ourselves through some really tough situations over the summer and throughout the fall uh, in order to prepare us, you know, for what's to come. And, and our players did a great job led by our strength and conditioning coach, uh, Jimmy Stitz, who we think is, is dynamite and one of the best in the country, if not the best. And uh, certainly that was something that we wanted to attack. I'm curious, uh, cutting into his production on the court, so someone can, can somewhat fill into that, but I'm wondering from the intangibles that he brought and all of those things that you just talked about, the toughness and, and the effort and coming ready to go, um, where do you begin to cut into those intangibles that you lost? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think, you know, the, the short answer to that is this this program's always had players step up each and every year and some that you might not expect. Uh, you know, Justin Bean didn't come here a household name. Uh, he left here a legend. And uh, it was it was a matter of, you know, working his way into that point. And he started out as a role player and then, you know, became a go to guy for us his senior year. Uh, the increase in production from his, you know, first three years to his last year. I think his first three years he averaged nine points a game. Uh, his last year he averaged over 17. Uh, his three-point shooting, you know, increased significantly. I think he made 19 total in three years. His last season he made 46 in one year and shot 47%. And so, you know, th that's what Utah State's basketball is all about. It's about improving each and every year. Uh, and then improving not only individually, but improving collectively. And so we feel uh, we have the right players, you know, here at Utah State, uh, guys that have worked hard to get to where they are right now. Uh, we've got a great core group of captains. Uh, we've established four captains for our team, Rylan Jones, uh, who obviously played dynamite for us last year. Sean Bairstow, even though he was hurt early in the season, really came on strong you know, throughout the remainder of the season. Once Brock uh, Miller went out, they kind of exchanged, you know, positions there. And then Stephen Ashworth uh, obviously had some tremendous games for us uh, this past year and, and has a really bright future. And then a newcomer, and it's rare that you would name a captain or name a newcomer a captain uh, in, in Taylor Funk, but he's earned that. He's been here, you know, pretty much since the day he committed. And, uh, you know, has hit the ground running, is connected with his teammates and really earned, you know, his way within this team. And he's a 1,400-point scorer in college uh, at, at coming from St. Joe's. So, you know, we feel good about where we're at right now. Other guys that I didn't even mention that aren't captains right now have really improved from last year. 
And so I think it's a collective effort, and the guys understand that. It's about not one individual, but, you know, our team overall. Coach, we're going to open things up to uh, our gathered media for questions. To the media that has just joined, go ahead and raise your hand uh, on the Zoom toolbar. We'll get you queued up and get you called upon. Our first question for you, Coach, is from Mark Ziegler with the San Diego Union Tribune Park. Uh, I see in the in the media poll you pick eight, but then when I go to, to Ken Palm, which is you know historically been fairly accurate, uh, you're the third highest Mount West team. It goes San Diego State, Wyoming, and then you. Which one are you? Are you the third place team in this league, or are you the eighth place team? Yeah, I, think, I have no idea, honestly. I think I think preseason polls are preseason polls. You know, uh, you know, I think. You know, you have to earn your way into – you're either going to earn your way into a higher uh, finish or you're going to earn your way into a lower finish. And so we're nowhere right now, uh, and, and none of us are, to be quite honest. And I think it's, you know, for us, you know, uh, we can't worry about where we're picked or what others think about us. Uh, we have to come in here with blinders on each and every day and, and worry about, you know, are we taking care of – uh, you know, the little things that are going to help us become the best team that we can be. Are we a connected group? I mean, that's something that we talked about all summer. Are we, are we going to be more connected than other teams that we play against? And we're off to a good start with that. Uh, but again, you know how it is. I mean, you can't worry about what others, you know, think that you're going to do uh, the rest of the year, you have to get, just go do it. And, uh, you know, we don't want to take offense to it, uh, to being picked eighth, because we realize, you know, that this league is really, really strong each and every year. They're great coaches in this league. They're great individual players and they're great teams. And uh, as evidenced by last year, I mean, it was just such a, a dogfight each and every night. And, uh, you know, we understand that. Our guys that are back from last year certainly understand that. They understand how hard it is you know, two finished at the top of the Mountain West. And so we want to pay it its due respect. And, uh, you know, we'll kind of see how things shake out as the season wears on. What is the, what is the computer seeing that maybe the media isn't? Uh, what, what, what is it do you think you have in your team that, that you know, allow you to be that high in, in computer metrics? Yeah, I mean, I think we, we've got a balanced team. I mean, this team last year and the majority of our guards, really all of our guards are back from last season, right? Uh, you know, you look at it, Ryland Jones, Stephen Ashworth, Sean Bairstow, Max Shulga, RJ Idle Rock, uh, you know, all of those guys, you know, return a core group of guards from last season. And, you know, last year's team was number one in the country uh, in assisted field goals, like over 60% of our field goals were assisted. We didn't shoot it well, you know, quite honestly. And we feel like we have good shooters and, and uh, you know, we're excited about, you know, uh, the opportunity to, pr to change that. Uh, you know, I think overall, you know, for the season, we shot it pretty well from three, but not in Mountain West play. And, uh, you know, I think we were dead last, you know, which was a bit of a surprise for us. Uh, but we still were first in assisted field goals. So we figured out a way, you know, to, uh, you know, make up for the lack of, you know, shooting the ball uh, appropriately. And so I think certainly that's a factor. Our defense got way better as the year wore on. Um, you know, you just look at the last few games of the season, you know, the, the Colorado State game, the last game of the year in conference tournament, I think the score is 52-50. You know, it's just a tight game. And, uh, and teams learn more about one another and as the season goes on and, and – our teams tend to to get better as the year year wears on, and and certainly that's a goal of ours. You know, you can't be the same as you are on October fifteenth, you know, in in March, and expect to be you know a champion or to have a chance at a championship. Uh, you've got to constantly improve each and every day, and not have blinders on to uh, you know some of the the holes that might be there. Uh, in your team and uh, we try to attack our weaknesses you know each and every day but also you know continue to uh, work on our strengths you know as well and so again the numbers are the numbers uh, but nothing's happened at this point uh, there's a lot to be determined there's teams that will be picked really low that will finish high there'll be teams that'll picked high that might not meet the expectations that that initially are placed upon them across the country I'm talking about 
it just is the way it is. It's like that every season. Tristan, a lot of questions in queue, so we ask that you keep your, your questions to one question and a follow-up question for Coach Odom. Next up, Jason Walker, 106.9, the fan in Salt Lake City. Coach, uh, you mentioned Taylor Buck uh, you know, being a leader. Uh, what kind of role do you expect him to take on the court uh, in terms of you know, leading, in terms of scoring defense or whatnot? Yeah, I mean, I think he's an all-around player. Um, certainly, he's known for his jump shot. Uh, when you see him shoot the ball, it's it's about as pretty as it gets. Uh, you always think it's going in, uh, whether he's just shooting around with his teammates or he's actually in a game. Um, but he's more than that. Uh, he's a rebounder. He's a guy that can you know control the glass and rebound. You know his position. He's a guy that works hard to defend his position. He's a guy that moves off the ball uh, really well. And, you know, for me, as I look at him, he's, he's kind of a taller uh, Brock Miller, you know, for us. I mean, he runs off of screens. Uh, he's about 6'8". Uh, you know, he can sit behind screens and shoot the three. He can really pass the ball. And uh, so I think certainly from, you know, an offensive perspective, you know, when you lose, you know, two, two players in, in Justin Bean and Brandon Horvath who meant so much to us from an offensive production standpoint – uh, you know, it's it was important that we, you know, sign someone in that position that had done it before, and he certainly has. And like I said before, he's just he's hit the ground running from a personality standpoint. You know, with his teammates, uh, he gets along with everyone. Uh, he really wants to win, and you know, he's had you know some some individual success. You know, coming from St. Joe's, but didn't win as much as he wanted to win, and so that was one of the reasons that. You know, he chose to come out to Utah State, you know, a winning tradition, you know, a place where he felt like he could fit in. And uh, I think the visit taught him that. Uh, you know, he learned a ton about his teammates, you know, while he was here in that short amount of time. And it, he committed before he left, you know, which was, you know, he probably could have gone a lot of different places, you know, throughout the country had he let that thing drag out a little bit longer. Uh, but he didn't do that. Uh, he found the right fit for him. And he took it when it was ready, and we're we're so happy that he did. Let me kind of follow up on a different player, uh, Sean Barstow, took a step up last year. Uh, what kind of step forward did he see to try and take this year? Yeah, a tremendous step forward. Uh, certainly, we saw it last season. Um, you know, he had a disjointed year. Uh, we felt so bad for him, all of us, and I know he was disappointed. You know, in our blue and white scrimmage last year when he got injured, and that kind of derailed you know, the beginning of the season for him. He was playing lights out at that point. And to have to go back into, you know, the injury protocol and, and be sitting on the sideline for, for that amount of time, uh, you know, was, was disheartening for all of us. Um, but he handled it like a man. Uh, you know, he was, he was on, on, on the spot in terms of his rehab and, and staying true to that. Uh, Leah did a great job and our doctors did a great job of getting him back. And he was able to, to kind of get his feet wet and finish the year on a really positive note, you know, in conference play and uh, became a reliable scorer, certainly in transition and his ball handling and passing. Uh, he could play with his back to the basket and go at matchups inside. Uh, and he's really developed his jump shot, you know, over the course of this, this uh, you know, spring, summer and fall and has become a more confident shooter, you know, from the perimeter. And, uh, you know, I'm excited for, for, you know, our Aggie fans and those in the Mountain West to see him play this year. Next question for you comes from Sean Harrison from the Herald Journal News. Hey, Coach. Uh, you've kind of mentioned uh, Taylor Funk a little bit, but what about some of the other new guys like Dan, Dan Aiken and, uh, and Isaac Johnson? How have they fit in so far? Yeah, I mean, both have fit in great, quite honestly. Uh, you know, obviously, we're most, our coaching staff is most familiar with Dan. Uh, Dan played for us. Uh, you know, in, at UMBC, he might even be, I think he and Marco, even though Marco, you know, Anthony from, you know, Utah used to be at Utah State. I think they may be the last two remaining players from that UVA UMBC game. Uh, I think Marco was redshirting. Dan actually played in that game and started at center for us. But, um, you know, just a bit of, bit of history there. But um, Dan's been great, you know. Um, you know, he did a great job, you know, this past summer uh, when he was able to join us. Um, he's really hit the ground running. He's reunited with one of his buddies who he played with, 
at UMBC and RJ Idle Rock. And so they've had fun kind of being here together again. Um, and Dan's a unique player. Uh, Dan's quite honestly a player that we were missing last year. Um, he's a physical defender. He can guard multiple positions from the center to the point guard. Um, he's improved his shooting. Uh, he's really fast and pretty athletic uh, as well. And so he's, he's somebody that, you know, will be, uh, you know, a, a player that will be beneficial for, you know, our program. Isaac's happy to be here. Uh, Isaac's, you know, got tremendous size. Uh, he's coming from a really quality program, Oregon, at Oregon. Uh, he's happy to be here at, at Utah State uh, amongst, you know, teammates and guys that he's, he's been familiar with over the years from his time in Utah at American Fork. And, uh, you know, he's, he's enjoying himself. Um, you know, Isaac's a skilled post player. Uh, you know, he's a guy that can play with his back to the basket. Uh, he's a little bit like Horvath, I think, from a, you know, long-term standpoint. Uh, maybe not right away. Uh, you know, Brandon was in his sixth year, basically, you know, when he played for us. And, uh, you know, Isaac just, just, has just gotten back off of his mission, goes to Oregon, and now he's kind of getting his feet wet here at Utah State. And uh, he's got a really bright future for us. Next question comes from Jeff Grammer with the Albuquerque Journal. Hey, Ryan, uh, I'm glad you already touched on Tom Barstow. He's a guy I wanted to ask you about having the big brother uh, that played for the Lobos years ago. But um, I do want to ask you, you've been in a unique situation with NCAA tournament experience. Are you for or against expansion? I don't know that it would have gotten any more teams in, you know, from your previous stop. A, a year ago, you guys would have been in that realm of, of net numbers where you would have got in if they added another 20 or 30 teams. What do you think about NCAA tournament expansion? Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't thought long and hard about it. I mean, they're certainly not going to ask me what I think. Uh, I don't. I don't believe. Uh, maybe collectively they'll ask our coaches, but um, you know, I mean, I'm all for you know student athlete experience, right? And and you know, there's something about playing in that that tournament, and and you see it every year. The disappointment in players. You know, they go four years, they help a program build from the ground up, you know, and then all of a sudden they get right to the end and they're right there, but they, you know, they're in a one-bid one league or maybe they're in a, a Mountain West type league where it's not a definite you're going to get four every single year. Um, and to see the smiles on those kids' faces and see them experience what the NCAA tournament's all about, you know, I would be for more getting in there, uh, you know, for sure. And, and – how they do that, I have no idea, but I certainly would not be opposed to it. This last question for you comes from John Keetle from HoopsHD.com. Good morning, Coach. Last year you got to visit Annapolis, Conway, and Sioux Falls. This year you're stuck going to San Francisco, San Diego, and Honolulu. How excited is the team, and more importantly, how excited <laughs> is your family? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great question. You know, it's called good scheduling. Coach Dixon, he got it done. <laughs> no, we're excited about our schedule. We, we feel like we, we put together a really tough schedule. Uh, certainly our non-conference games at home, if you really dive into that and go look at it, each of the teams that are, that are coming to Logan and playing in the spectrum, some are picked first in their league. You know, certainly Oral Roberts, you know, has, has, has a dynamite team. Uh, they're coming off of a, a Sweet 16 a couple of years ago, and and uh, Bradley. Uh, we open up with UVU, and we we obviously know how good they are. Um, you know, Santa Clara comes to town. You know, uh, you know, Coach Sendak, you know, is one of the best coaches around. And so, you know, we feel like we put together a really challenging schedule that'll that'll benefit us as we you know get ready for Mountain West play, playing a couple of neutral site games. You know, against San San, San Francisco and uh, Loyola Marymount. Um, and then, you know, obviously a road game at, at San Diego. Coach Lavin has taken over that program there, and I know we'll do great things. So, uh, And then the trip for, trip to Hawaii is not something that I would want to do every single year, obviously, but over Christmas uh, and, and taking, you know, your kids away from their families. Um, but, you know, basketball is, is one of those sports that goes over two semesters, and so we try to – you know, do a trip every year, whether it's around Thanksgiving. Last year it was Myrtle Beach at that ESPN tournament. Um, 
And, you know, this year it'll be, be, be uh, Hawaii, and we're really excited about that. The majority of our players' families will be able to go to that and, and be there, and so it'll be a good celebration, uh, you know, for us, you know, as we get, get ready for, you know, Mountain, prior to Mountain West play. But, you know, we are excited about the destinations that we're, we're hitting and, and, more importantly, about the quality of the opponent that we're playing. Awesome. Thanks so much. That's right. Retro. With that said, let's bring in those players here for Utah State that join us live from Logan. Chop Barristow and Ryland Jones. Fellas, uh, appreciate you making time for us. Uh, Ryland, let's, let's start with you. Uh, the pace of postseason basketball, Utah State really no, no stranger to playing beyond a conference tournament. But what did playing extra games at a high level in the NIT do to fuel the offseason to get you where to? Today. Yeah, no, uh, it was super cool to have a, a home game in the NIT. Uh, the Spectrum was rocking that night. Uh, probably one of our best crowds of the year. And, you know, it just gave us a little bit of taste of what it's like to play in a postseason. But also the early exit kind of gave us that extra motivation uh, for the summer and all the close games we lost last year. But that one in particular, to, you know, we got a little bit of a taste of it. And now we're trying to get back and do better things and uh, our goal, you know, is always to be the NCAA tournament. Got a question for our student athletes. Please make sure to raise your hand to enter the queue. Sean, for you, Dalton injury last season, able to come back, though, end the season on a positive note. Coach said this offseason that he's seen you really gain confidence in your perimeter shooting. Was that a focus for you this offseason? Yeah, it was definitely a focus for me. Um, I feel like I've always had it, but it kind of uh, went away last year. Um, so it's really just getting that confidence back and getting in the gym and getting the reps up and yeah, just getting ready for this year. Well, we've got a question for you both coming from Jeff Grammer from the Albuquerque Journal. Jeff? Um, Big Brother uh, retires, hangs it up um, this past off season. I'm curious if, if you've talked with him uh, much about if he's going to be able to come see you play this year. And then I want to talk about just how, you, how you're heading into this next season and, and how your career has progressed from, uh, you know, freshmen to now, how you how you feel you've progressed? Yeah, uh, yeah, I speak to speak to Cameron Heap. Um, been a really good mentor for me for the past, you know, three three going on four years. Um, so, yeah, his, his retirement, I'm, I'm happy for him. He had a had a great career. Um, and this, this season, just looking to progress as a team, um, we got a really good, really good squad and everyone likes to play together. So the ball's going to be moving around. Everyone's going to be able to eat. Um, so, yeah, really excited for that. Oh yeah, my bad. Uh, yeah, he's gonna come in January, and then I think he's gonna go to San Antonio with his wife, and then come back to uh, senior night in March. Thanks, man. Got a question for our student athletes? You can go ahead and enter the queue. We'll get you called upon. Just raise your hand on the Zoom toolbar at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Ryan, coach talked about you guys being number one in the country last season in assisted field goals. Uh, is that a priority? Is that something that you guys? Uh, talk about in practice and work on that unselfish style of play, or does that just come naturally? Uh, I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, we do talk about uh, the power of the pass and how passing can create uh, for our offense. And it's something, you know, we would look at it in film. And one of our coaches, uh, Coach Crawford, that's like his favorite saying is the power of the pass. And then we're also just unselfish uh, players, and it's kind of our play style. And it's also been the play style of Utah State teams in the past. So we're just kind of keeping the tradition going. And last year, we were able to be the uh, number one team in assisted uh, baskets and looking to do the same this year. Another question for you both coming from Jacob Nielsen with KSL and Logan. Hey, fellas, this is for either of y'all. Um, just last year, obviously, Brandon and, and Justin, they were really able to lead the team in a lot of production. And, Losing them, it seems like you had you had some guys in the front court, but it seems like the team is really on you guys in the back court and the experience that you have. Is is there extra motivation in kind of the guard and small forward role for you, Sean, to really lead the team and produce for for the guys? Um, yeah, obviously, like we want to we want to produce for the team and and be the best players we can be. But that's really it. We want to be the best players we can be. 
Uh, we got a bunch of guys who are who are ready to step into bigger roles. Um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a collective thing. Um, whoever scores the most points at the end of the day, we don't really care. It's about getting the wins at the end of the day, and you know that's what we're really, really worried about. Riley, can I ask you how fun is it to be in a in a backcourt that is so loaded and there's just so many of you guys that can step up and play big minutes? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's super good. Uh, it's competitive practices, they make all of us better every day. Uh, and then, you know, when you get in the game, it's just who's on that night and you just kind of feed that hand and we all love each other and cheer for each other. And, you know, we're all ec ecstatic when, you know, we throw one more and Steven makes a three or we come off and, you know, Max makes a three. Like, that's what we that's what we live, live for here in Logan. And, you know, it's super fun to have, you know, five, six really good guards in the backcourt. Question comes from Sean Harrison with the Herald Journal News. Hey, Riley, just wanted to ask you a, a little bit about how these new guys are fitting in. Uh, to Ann Aiken, Taylor Funk, uh, Isaac, so you got some big guys there. How are they fitting in with the team so far? Yeah, you know, Coach hit on it earlier. They're all fitting in great. Um, Taylor, you know, he committed on his visit and came out here like a week later. And, you know, he's, his personality is great. We all get along with him. Isaac, you know, he's from Utah, and a lot of us played with Isaac growing up, so we had that connection. And, you know, he came in and he meshed as well with everybody. And then same with Dan. Uh, Dan was a little bit newer. Uh, you know, he only knew RJ. And, you know, he got here in the summer. And, you know, he just hit the ground running with all of us. Uh, we have a great team, great team chemistry. Um, yeah, our culture is great here. And we get guys that fit our culture. And, yeah. What about Mason Falstaff? He's another kid, I guess. I, I kind of keep forgetting a little bit. He's new, even though all the Cash Valley knows who he is. I mean, he's new to the team, new to the Aggies. Yeah, you know, it's Mason, you know, he's he's one of a kind. He's funny. He's just got a, you know, energetic thing about him that he just makes everybody laugh. He's always smiling. He never he never has a bad day. And, you know, he's one of my great friends growing up. Same with a couple of guys on the team. And, you know, he just fits our culture. And, you know, he makes our culture better because of, you know, his personality and who he is. Question coming from John Teetle with HoopsHD.com. Uh, my question is for Sean. Uh, you were a good three-point percentage shooter in 2021, but only six of 46 from behind the arc last year. So is that something that you really worked hard on during the offseason, or are you just giving up on it because it's not your shot? <laughs> yeah, definitely not giving up on it. Um, worked really hard in the offseason just to get that confidence back and all that type of stuff. And, you know, the coach has uh, given me a lot of confidence to go and shoot the ball with confidence. So, yeah, um, ready to let it fly. Ryland, thank you both so much for joining us today for Men's Basketball Media Days. Excited to see you and the Aggies get after it this season. I still need to come experience that Spectrum Magic. I have not been up to see that that crowd yet, but I've heard it's uh, heard it's the second to none. So I'm excited to see what you and the Aggies can get get going this season. Appreciate it. Thank you.